Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So, ooh, the indulgence is going to begin in shortly, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. I know you all are as well. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. I mean, I'm going with Loken, so... He won't mind. I'll help you pair off with a bunch of girls your own size. In return, though, I thought I had to get to see your car. <laughs> Keep trying, Taki. Besides, I'm not... I falter. Not... Uh... Into girls? Yeah, I know. First time for everything, though. I give her a flat-faced frown. How did you know? Orion told me. And how did he know? He just knows, rat. The dude runs a mating troop. Guy can usually tell what you, what you like just from a glance. And he says, what you like ain't this. She grasps one of her breasts seductively, giving me a sly wink. I roll my eyes. Hey, so is Orion gonna be free? He normally hooks up with the mutt. I am, um, I don't really know. M maybe? Honestly, I'm crushing hard for that tiger. First time I saw him rolling up to the village, I thought my pussy <laughs> was gonna burst into song. <laughs> that writing that is an incredible way of wording that okay i wonder if bite can delete mental images from my brain maybe aeon can do it with a knife if necessary so the clans are okay with guys liking guys girls liking girls depends on the clan hey you're mostly good javoni ain't gonna start f forcing you to munch the same pie as everyone else other clans ain't always so keen and you always got the odd one here and there that who won't have it it's seen as disrespectful to the indulgence Disrespectful how? Folks take the event seriously. It's a big deal. Me? They say we still got plenty of spunk to go around, so I ain't gonna be slap your hand away if you reach for the sausage platter. And to be honest, it's pretty rare. There's always rumors that the mate and truce practice on each other, and Caius ain't a fan of it. He's exiled folks for less. Most Draconi are cool, though. Do people know about Loken? Yeah, but he's a black runner. So are you. Ain't nobody gonna ask you questions. Even Caius? Who the fuck cares what Caius thinks? He ain't the chieftain of the fucking world. Still another reason for this is for a hating technophobic tyrant to be wary of me. <sniffs> Soon the brisk morning air is rousing me from my initial fatigue. Though a few extra hours of sleep wouldn't hurt after this. So, your first time in the zones. How was it? I held up my bandaged hand to her. Ha, <laughs> sugar cooks? Yep, three of them. I guess and Loken handled them. Only after I handled them. Sort of not counting Byte's android superpowers. Of that right! Good on you, Rat! Find any good salvage out there? We weren't really looking for any. We stopped to fit a few places just in case, but... Oh, wait! I, st I start over with a jolt of realization as I pat my thigh to see if it's still in my pocket. I find what I'm looking for and tug it out, resting it on my hand. But what's that? It's a mating lure for humans. It releases a chemical that turns us into rabid sex monsters. What is it really? A music box. Watch. We stop walking for a moment whilst I flick the thing open and wind the tiny lever. Techie's ears flick at the sound. She cranes her head forward, pointing her ear at my hand. That's a neat little tune, Rat. I like it. You gonna try it? I snap my hand closed. No way. It's mine. Where the hell did that come from? Oh, yours? Ha! Who needs Logan when you got you, huh? Hey, I didn't mean... It's just the first thing I found on my people. It means a lot to me. Taki shrugs in understanding. As far as I'm concerned, all that salvage laying out there is yours either way. <laughs> you go get whatever you think you need. Just don't start going all this is mine on me, you hear? I'll knock your tooth out and add it to Loken's. <laughs> I'll try. Hi, grand. God, I love Taki. She pauses for a beat as the Dracon Draconite village comes into view, giving me occasionally sideways glances. I frown at her. What? I was, uh, well, I was gonna say thanks. Uh, what for? Last night, for the demon. Losing one of our own like that would have been rough. Village owes you, owes you, and, owes you and Loken big time. I recall the entity standing behind Milo, mocking and teasing him. Even with whatever vigor I have, the image chills me. Are they okay? The kids? No, no. I heard they were real shaken up, not talking to anyone. The girls didn't sleep all night, apparently. Don't know about the lad. He was the chief all night. I wince. Demon attacks the mind. Demons attack the mind, and that must be especially brutal for a kid. 
Of course, most of the tribeswomen are saying it was just a wild animal. But, you know, that's how things go. Probably for the best. So, she hesitates. Y yeah? So, it was a proper demon. I blink at her. You really asking me that? Yeah, it was a demon, right? What you guys saw last night. You'll fry your brain with questions like that. Don't think about them. She opens her mouth to ask another question, but I shoot her a warning glare. I mean it. Just getting curious, you know. That's new. She didn't seem curious when I asked her a couple days ago. What's changed? Just pretend it was an animal. Don't think about them. That's what black are for. Aye, right, that's what you're for. Anyway, you gonna wash? I frown, perturbed. Do I stink? Like an, like an acre of shit. Oh, I'll go to the springs too later. Huh, <laughs> just use the water makers we got here. They're pretty good. Even got some fancy washing soaps, courtesy of the mating troop. I assume the water, the water makers are the showers. I do like the sound of one, and I'm curious to see how the plumbing for them is set up here. Yeah, I might do that. Hey, I think I know the way, the way to the hall from here. Aye, right, rat. Watch yourself. Be seeing you later. And you weird human cock, too. She winks at them. She winks at me, then turns around and marches off in the direction of the village square. I hide my arms in my hoodie pocket and make my way to Javonia. On my way, I pass tribeswomen and members of the mating troop. The men are all being well looked after. They must rely on the accommodations provided by the clans they visit to survive. There's a lot of blatant teasing going on between both sides. The tribeswomen are making themselves comfortable in the laps of the men who are similarly prying the women for attention. The lascivious, the lascivious energy is palpable. I can sense of them all patiently holding until their onto their cultured sensibilities until the time comes to throw them off and descend into prehistoric lust later tonight. It's so natural to them. I don't think I'd be able to lose my inhibitions like that, no matter how horny I was. I'm way too self-conscious, especially as a tiny human around all these mighty bipeds. My thoughts drift back to Loken. What's going on with us? Every time we get close, yeah, we, every time we get we got close yesterday, he'd always back off. I'm not fully clear what he's anxious about. I don't want to make him uncomfortable again. I'm his acolyte, first and foremost. Only this and nothing more. After what I saw in the Black Zones yesterday, perhaps thinking with my dick isn't a good idea. This world is more dangerous than I could have imagined. I need to stay focused. I find the hall easily enough. Nobody bothers me, save for the occasional odd stare or nervous greeting. The energy of the indulgence seems focused on the square, where most of the troop has gathered. Out here, things feel more normal. I yawn. After this, I'll need to catch a few extra hours of sleep. Alex, good you're here. Thanks for coming. Have a seat. I plant myself behind one of the tables, tapping my fingers nervously on it. Do you need anything? Food? Water? Dravonia sits opposite me, lounging back and staring with interest. She's being awfully nice. I'm fine, thanks. I already had breakfast. Good, good. I wanted to thank you for what you did last night. You helped save those children's lives. Things could have played out very differently if you hadn't been there. I lean forward, immediately racked with concern. How are they? Dravonia grumbles with unease. The girls are deeply unsettled, but that's to be expected. They didn't see anything, but it's clearly still having an effect. A few weeks of nightmares might be unavoidable, but I don't see any permanent harm. And Milo? She gestures to a spot behind me. See for yourself. I whirl around, and to my surprise, see young Milo sitting alone at a table nearby. The boy's absorbed in building something with pieces of scrap metal. He seems... fine? I'm glad to see he's okay, but it's not what I expected. Has he said anything? He's still a little shaken, but not like the other children. For the most part, he's just his usual quirky self. I frown. Are you sure he's okay? The demon targeted him. He was right in the thick of it. That's one of the reasons I called you here. He's a tough one, for sure. Very spirited, but she's still only a child. Will you speak to him? Me? He doesn't know me. He's starting to. What about his mother? The whole clan is responsible for our youngsters, including you. I cringe with unease. Uh, does that mean, like, I have to feed him and stuff? Milo had a run-in with a demon and seems unaffected. It's unusual. I want a black runner's opinion. Just checked in with him. You saved him. He does know you. To be honest, even without the clan's obligation, I feel invested in this lad's well-being after last night. Sure, I'll be quick. I rise to my feet, sliding my chair back and leaving Gervoni on the t at the table. Milo is sitting with his back to me, engrossed in his scrap metal project. As I get closer, I peer over his shoulder to see what he's making. He's using a rock to bend the metal pipe into a Y shape. A slingshot, perhaps? Though it looks a bit too intricate for that. Hey, Milo! Oh, he- Oh, he's adorable! The boy looks over his shoulder at me. Oh, you're Alex! Hey! Yeah, that's right. With a friendly smile, I sit opposite him. 
He's wearing a hoodie like mine, heavily fashioned after the Zephyr. How are you doing? He hums. I'm trying to estimate his age, but it's tough given that he isn't human. I'd wager about ten. So our uh, chief is making me work the fields all week. I was out there all morning. If I have to listen to these screaming cows, I'm going to lose it. I contain a laugh. Is that your punishment? Being knee-deep in pig shit? Yeah, it sucks. Hey, can you get me out of it? If it teaches you not to go to zone baiting again, I'm all for the pig shit. Oh, don't worry, I'm never going zone baiting again. It was so stupid, I only did it because the other kids dared me. Come on, Milo, you, you, I bet you're smarter than that. Milo groans and flails dramatically. Maria called me a coward. I'm not taking that shit from her. Her face looks like a duck's asshole. She really hates me, too. All because I once dropped a spider down the back of her shirt and laughed about it. <coughs> well, I wonder why she doesn't like you. <laughs> why did you do that? Because it was really funny, and she deserved it. She's a bully. Everyone thinks so. He picks up a piece of scrap metal creation. I still can't figure out what it is. No more, no more zone baiting, I promise. I'll just stick to stuff I'm actually good at. Like making stuff? What are you making right now? Nope, it's a new creation. You gotta wait till it's done, like everyone else. Ah, an inventor. Fair enough. What else are you good at, then? Um, I like knocking on Barrow's door and running away. Does that count? Damn, I'm starting to like this little punk. Heh, <laughs> not really. Yeah, well, he's a fat prick. He once threw his shoe at my friend's head. Why did he do that? Because he's a fat prick! I fold my arms and smirk. He must, he must just be putting on a brave face, right? Hey, Milo, do you, um, remember anything from last night? He puffs his cheeks out and blows a raspberry, lips pouting. I remember hearing stuff and seeing you talking to me. I, I knew it was standing behind me. I remember the smell, too. What was that? I shake my head. I don't know. It was my first time seeing one, too. <laughs> well, I'm not scared of them. It's okay, Milo. You don't have to act all tough with me. You seemed pretty scared last night. Duh, there was a demon behind me. There isn't a demon behind me right now, is there? I pretend to look past him, face crunched up in scrutiny. Nah, it's just the chief. She's much scarier. Milo snickers. It was scary at the time. I thought I was gonna die. I always knew demons were real. Most people don't think so. Well, they're wrong, aren't they? They should stop pretending. Huh, I don't think he's putting on a facade. He really is fine. Just as I'm pondering how he isn't even slightly traumatized, his green eyes widen. They're fixed on a point just below my face. Bullet! What? There! He's looking at my amulet, the bullet chain Loken made for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I frown. Neither Mia nor Barra knew what a bullet was. I pinch it between my fingers, lifting it up to see so he can see. Did Loken teach you about these in school? Nope, I just remember it. From where? Um, I'm not sure, I just do. That's it. I finally realized why he's so calm. I better tell Loken about this. Hey, listen, I need to get back to the chief. If you ever need anything, let me or Loken know, okay? I will. Thanks, Alex. Got a future black runner here. Giving him a final smile, I rise back up to my feet. Yervonia watches me return. Her face lights up expectantly as I rejoin her at the table. Well? He's going to be fine. She squints at me. It's, uh, black runner stuff. I'll talk to Loken about him. All right. In that case, unto the real reason I summoned you here. I had a hunch that wasn't it. I want an explanation. She stares at me intensely. I have nothing to hide, but once I feel like I'm on... I have nothing to hide, but once I feel like I'm on trial. For what? Demons have never come this close to the borders before. Why were the Black Zones riled up? It happened all over Elayla. Oh, um, yeah, they were disturbed, but wait, all over Elayla? She nods soberly. Messages were coming in. Everything seems back to normal now, but two Caius' Black Hunters disappeared in the frenzy. He isn't happy. I wince, my stomach churning guiltily. Whatever we found at the rhinestone dish is bigger than I thought. What can you tell me? What did you see in the Black Zone? Well, we... I... Wait. I, sh I shouldn't tell you that stuff, should I? It's Black Runner business. It's Draconi business. So what did you see? Can you tell me anything about the demon that tried to take Milo? You, uh, you really want to know about Black Zones? I do, and I'm chieftain of the Draconi. Tell me what happened. As she waves her authority at me, I'm certain she knows how dangerous this line of inquiry is. You're the one who first told me ignorance is bliss. She irritably waves, a paw, waves her paw and dismisses my, my objection. Never mind all that with me. This is more important. Tell me what happened. I know I can't discuss this stuff with her, but for her own protection, but refusing her is, daunt, is a daunting retro prospect. They, um, I just, I'm not sure I should... I'm not some weak-minded peasant, Alex. Answer my question. When she snaps at me, my heart almost leaps from my chest. Javonia pinches her brow, drawing herself back to composure. 
Sorry, I'm sorry. I was hoping you'd have more for me. She sounds quite emotional. I've never heard her lose her cool like that. I understand this knowledge is dangerous, but my interest is personal. I have a grudge against the Black Zones. What happened? My sister, Lyra. Many years ago, she became informed. She died. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Alira was so passionate. She believed the clans would never progress unless we learned to face the Black Zones. She knew that she knew that the longer we stagnated, the more we would be, we would dwindle. She knew the risks, and she took them. She dove into the Black Zones in search of knowledge. Whatever she found cost her everything. There's a pause. Even with all her dignified composure, I can see this is heavily weighing her down. I won't allow her efforts to be wasted. I want to know what's out here, what's out there, Alex, for her and everyone. Generations of cowering. It has to end, Alex. She knew that. When I first saw you, a living Zephyr, I knew it was too risky to keep you alive. However, I thought you might be a key to something, some insight. That's why you didn't execute me straight away. I'm sorry for the manipulation. I'm quiet for a moment, mulling over my thoughts. I get it. Do you? I stare at her. Yesterday, in the Black Zones, we... I stopped, weary of how much I should say. Tell me. It's all still there. The Zephyr ruins. I saw it all. I'm the last human. I don't even know what I've lost, but... Only that the clans don't even remember what humans look like. I just feel alone. It scares me. It scares me that something wanted us not just dead, ab abolished, deleted from everything. If I don't find out what happened, they win, don't they? Or I lose. I don't know what's worse. I falter. I'm only now realizing how much this means to me. Logan and I found something out there yesterday. It's dangerous, but I have to follow it up. I have to. There's a short pause, then she nods in understanding. Seeing that must have been saddening for you. I look away, feeling my jaw tense. I fumble with the music box in my pocket. Nope, not sad. Angry. I hear it. She smiles resolutely at me. I want justice for your people, and Alira, and I will find it. I will beat these demons. Even Loken didn't understand my outrage, but she does. Chief, if I start telling you these things, I'm sending you down the same path as Alira. Maybe there's a way, but this isn't it. The madness of the Black Zones is real. That knowledge really does have a price. She sighs. All right, Alex, I won't push you for information. But in return, promise me something. What? Whatever reason you're here, whatever purpose you have, fulfill it. I grin. Deal. For Alira. And for every lost human. I'm sorry about your sister. She shrugs off my sympathy, scraping her chair back on rising to her feet. If she were here, she'd smack me for all this weeping. She was fierce like you couldn't imagine. On to other things, Alex. The indulgences tonight. I want you there. You're part of her clan now. A grimace. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here before we get into things that are too sexy to show on YouTube, even though this is heavily, or prob this is probably already quite censored well. We'll see. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!